right, let's discuss another very bizarre discovery in the realm of biology that once again was made completely by accident when one of the scientists behind the recent study was basically hiking and decided to pick up a snail that he then investigated under a microscope. And in the process, the discovery is actually something that nobody expected. He discovered a new type of a eusocial organism, or basically an organism very similar to what you see behind me. Here we're talking about things like ants, bees, wasps, termites, and so on. With the concept of eusociality being defined as a kind of a colony with a very defined caste system and a very strict division of labor among, for example, workers, warriors, and so on, and where there's also sometimes some kind of a queen. But more specifically, you social creatures have to show some kind of a cooperation and usually some kind of a brute care. Or basically here, there's usually no individualism and there's usually a focus on taking care of everyone else. It also usually involves different generations of adults and very often some kind of a division into reproductive and non-reproductive groups. For example, in ants, this usually involves non-reproductive warriors, whose main job is obviously to protect everyone. And so in this eusocial system, individuals in a certain caste usually lose some kind of an ability to perform something else much, much better. And the most common example is losing the ability to reproduce in order to become, for example, a very powerful soldier. But as a result of this communal behavior, eusociality, as it's also known, is also seen as a kind of a super organism. But even though ants are probably the most successful of them all, and bees are probably the most useful for the human society, over the years the scientists have learned that quite a lot of different species seem to have similar behavior. Except for ants, bees and wasps, we also have termites, which are technically closer to cockroaches than anything else. But surprisingly, there are even several types of snapping shrimps that seem to exhibit very similar behavior. One of the most famous examples is Sinalpheus regalis, which are also eusocial and also form unusual colonies with several specialized roles. And on top of this, there are even two different types of rodents known to us, both of whom are a type of a mole rat that's technically a eusocial mammal. Here's the other example, the naked mole rat, which usually lives in relatively large colonies and where the social structure is extremely similar to ants. There is one female, one to three males that are allowed to reproduce, and the rest of the colony are just workers. Here's roughly what the model of a typical colony looks like. And technically this is also the biggest physical example. But in this recent study, the scientists discovered the smallest example. And it's also in a completely new species. And so in this new study, Daniel Matz and Ryer Heschinger discovered the first ever flatworm that seems to possess extremely similar eusocial features, producing very different, very morphologically distinct cast members, with all of them having very specific roles. But bizarrely enough, this type of a worm is technically known as a fluke. It's basically a parasite. The first ever parasite to basically possess these eusocial features while also being known for affecting humans and specifically causing several conditions when someone eats either raw or poorly cooked fish. And that's actually part of its life cycle. A typical trematoda, which is a class of a flatworm, is an obligate internal parasite. It can only survive by being a parasite and it always involves a relatively complex life cycle. In most species, they require at least two separate hosts, but in this species, it requires three. And for pretty much all of them, the intermediate host, where most of the asexual reproduction happens, is always a snail. And so basically, in most cases, these flukes live inside these snails without really disturbing the host too much, but by constantly consuming a lot of the nutrients from the host, which allows them to reproduce asexually and then allows them to release all of these new babies into the open water. Now, for many of these flukes, this is where they usually infect something else, like for example, some kind of a rodent. But for this particular worm, this is where they look for their next target, fish. And so once inside the fish, they consume some of the flesh, but overall do not do too much damage. And that's because they're waiting for their last host. Whoever eats the fish is really their ultimate target. And if it's a human, they usually end up lodging somewhere in the intestine and basically cause a lot of health problems because they tend to inhabit epithelium of the small intestine, damaging everything in the process. And though usually this is not too dangerous, 
it can be dangerous if left untreated. But so far this is your typical parasite, nothing unusual here. But something unusual does happen in that first intermediate host. Apparently, while living in snails, they surprisingly develop complex colonies. And so this specific worm, known as Haplorchis pumilio, produces enormous colonies with very specialized roles. And they seem to do all of this inside the body of a living snail without damaging much in the process. And so they don't actually kill the snail, they just collect nutrients for many many years while reproducing asexually, forming a lot of different clones that go out there to look for different fish. And so this image right here shows us the diversity of forms. Here we have the mature worm that actually reproduces and can create different clones. We also have smaller baby worms that are still developing and are probably going to become mature reproductives. And we also have these very fast swimming cercaria, which are essentially released into the water in order to look for fish. But then there is a soldier. And as you can see right here, surprisingly, it's really small. So the obvious question is, how can this be a soldier? Turns out though, when they investigated these soldiers, they literally turn out to be mobile jaws. They only have one job, to bite something and to suck things out of it with their mouth. And here they were able to even show that these soldiers consistently attack everything else that's not part of the colony and is trying to enter the snail to potentially live there as well. And though other cast members, such as the babies or the reproductive ones, were not aggressive at all and ignored everything else, in every single case, soldiers attacked everything. And they seemed to be very successful, they destroyed approximately 94% of all invaders. And that's despite their really tiny size. They're only about half a millimeter in size or approximately 0.02 inches. But their mouths were five times larger than anyone else and they had no other organs and really no other purpose. Which is actually very similar to typical ants. And so by basically biting things and creating very powerful suction, they were able to destroy anything they encountered. Which obviously allows this worm to create a kind of a ecological dominance and to potentially become way more successful than other similar parasites. But don't be scared. Soldiers don't infect us, they only stay inside the snails. And so the stuff that gets into us is actually a different form. But apparently these types of parasites have already become quite spread out in California, Texas, Florida, large parts of Southern Asia, and they're also native to Africa. And so in those locations, eating raw fish might not be recommended. So yeah, next time you have sushi, make sure it's not from Texas. But because trematodes are actually very widespread and there are nearly 200,000 species out there, now the scientists believe that quite a lot of them potentially have very similar eusocial structures. It just we've discovered only one for now. But the reason this discovery is important is also because this is the smallest eusocial creature known to us. And because they're so tiny, they would be extremely easy to reproduce in a lab allowing the scientists to study this colonial behavior by literally just using a single snail. And so here this would allow the scientists to answer a lot of questions about different types of social organization. And possibly even answer questions of how this evolved, how long this behavior existed on planet Earth, or if this behavior can exist somewhere out there on another planet. Ok, maybe that's going too far, but at least for now we can focus on planet Earth. And so definitely an unusual and somewhat exciting discovery, at least for the field of biology. But once the scientists discover something else, or potentially discover some other unusual eusocial creature, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the other videos on, for example, ants in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.